Hey, it's Joe from HomestudioCorner.com, and today is the first video in a series of videos and articles dealing with productivity in your home studio. If you're anything like me, then you have wasted a ton of time in your studio over the last few years. Whether it's setting up hardware, rearranging your furniture, changing things in the software, messing around with things like that, you've easily lost hundreds of hours doing things that really have no effect on the music that you're producing or the quality of your recordings. And um, that's frustrating. I recently encountered that today. I spent a lot of time uh, setting up to record and spent less time actually recording. And I know and setup is important and, you know, all those things. But hopefully going to go through a few tips that you can use to improve your productivity and make better use of your time. Today, the tip deals with setting up or labeling your I.O., in Pro Tools. If you've never done this, you really should. Come up to the setup window, click up I, click on I.O., and it pulls up this I.O. setup window. Now what this lets you do, if you're not familiar with it, lets you label your inputs, your outputs, inserts, and buses. As you can see, my outputs 1 and 2 are labeled main out, and 3 and 4 are my headphone out. My second headphone amp on my 003, I can actually click a button and assign that to outputs 3 and 4. So I want to label that so I can get to that more easily from within a session. And the most important and probably the most customizable portion is going to be your buses. These are where you're routing, you know, a group of tracks like background vocals, for example, to one aux to EQ the entire thing together, or you're routing all your reverbs or your delays, uh, all sorts of things. And this is where you do that. This is where you can name each of those buses. So instead of routing it to, you know, something boring like this, bus 23, 24, and then remembering bus 23, 24, and go, you know, assign that to the aux input, you know, that can get old, and a lot of times you'll get confused and spend a lot of time figuring out where things are. And so this is how I have mine set up today. You know, that could change, and you can always come back and change it and save these settings because you can export these settings, as you see down here, and then import it back in. But I have, you know, my submix here where I send everything through one aux. I've got, you know, reverb delay, electric, acoustic guitars, background vocals. You can see what's going on. And that just helps me. So when I come back out and get into a session, when I go to, you know, say, route this channel over here to my reverb, I don't have to remember which bus that was and pick from numbers. I can just find the one that says reverb. And there we go. We've got a reverb send. You know, and the same applies for all your inputs and outputs. If you're, you know, doing fancy routing or doing a headphone mix or anything like that, it can really save you some time. So homework assignment for today, go in to your I.O. setup and label everything. It's going to make your life a lot easier when you start a new session and you try to remember how you're going to route things. And as you're looking at things, it's just visually easier to follow. As you can see here, these are all my acoustic guitar tracks. And they're all routed to the acoustic guitar bus coming into this aux channel. As you can see there, it's labeled, you know, it, this is the bus they're feeding. This is the bus that's coming into the input of this aux channel. And so when I hit play, these all are feeding through here. And it's not really a mystery because it's all labeled. So, sure, it's not necessary. You don't have to do this. But for me, it saves a lot of time having to set this up every time or naming the buses on a session-by-session -session basis. That can get old, too. So hopefully, that's something you're going to do. Go check it out. Spend 15 minutes setting that up, and I think you'll notice it's going to save you some time as you work on your sessions in the future. If you have any questions, if you're watching this on YouTube, head over to homestudiocorner.com and leave a comment on this post, and uh, I'll be coming out with a few more videos and articles dealing with other things you can do to be more productive. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.